Hello, good day everyone. Thank you for having the time to listen to this lecture on your learning task 1 and 4 for your um, weekly home uh, learning plan for your week 1 and week 2 and I'm here to discuss about the things that you need to understand for our lesson. So for the first quarter, we will be uh, looking about Earth and Space component of your Science 10. And <clears throat> of course, the first module is about plate tectonics. We would be looking at the relationship among the locations of volcanoes, earthquake epicent epicenters, and mountain ranges. For your first lesson, which is about the distribution of active volcanoes in mount major mountain belts, you have looked at how the many active volcanoes in the Philippines are being distributed, their locations, and their record of eruptions for the past years. After that, our next task is for you to understand now how these um, volcanoes or active volcanoes are related to the distribution of the major mountain belts and you learn that the major mountain belts are actually located near the location of those active volcanoes. <clears throat> now moving our learning task one for this week, which is entitled Find the Epicenter. For this task, our objective is for us to locate the epicenter of an earthquake using triangulation method. During your grade 8 science topics, you learn that the epicenter is the point above the ground, which is directly above the focus of an earthquake. When we say focus, it is the origin or where the earthquake actually begin underneath the ground. For the materials that you'll be needing, you have your hypothetical records of earthquake waves, Philippine map, which we provided already, and a drawing compass. Make sure you have your materials ready for this activity. For the first step of the procedure, you, know, you are asked to study the data in this table showing the difference in the arrival time of P wave and S wave on the three seismic recording stations. Now this table is purposely completed for every one of you for easier discussion purposes. You can see here in this data for the first column you have your different recording stations located in Batangas, Puerto Princesa, and Davao. On the second column recorded here or the time difference in the arrival of P wave and S waves in seconds. Remember that P wave arrive earlier than S wave. P wave is known as the primary from the name itself primary. So it comes first and after which S wave, S means secondary. So it comes right after the P wave. So the time difference or the time interval in the arrival of P wave and S waves in a particular recording station is recorded or is being uh, noted in column number two. For Batangas, the time difference is 32 seconds. For Puerto Princesa, you have 40.533 seconds. And for Davao, you have 25.6 seconds. Notice that the shorter the time difference in the arrival of um, 
the P wave and the S wave would uh, denote or say something that it is closer to the epicenter. That's one of the clues that you need to understand. Another is, you, for the third column, you already have the distance of the epicenter from the station, which is in kilometers. So you can see here, accordingly, as I've said, so the shorter the time difference in the arrival of P and S wave, the closer it is to the distance or the closer it is to the epicenter. So as you could notice, Davao is um, obviously much nearer to the epicenter because of its shorter distance computed. And then I'm going to show you the formula that was used to compute this distance from the epicenter. Now for your activity, using the map that is provided to you, you will be using this measurement of radius in centimeter, which you're going to use in locating the epicenter. For Batangas, you'll be using 3 centimeter. For Puerto Princesa, you'll be using 3.8. And for Davao, you will be using 2.4. So it is important to take a closer look at this table while doing learning task number one. Okay, so after looking at the graph, your next thing that you need to do actually is to understand how we computed the distance of the epicenter from each of the station, wherein we use the formula d is equal to td or time difference over 8 seconds times 100 kil kilometers, where d is the distance in kilometer of that station from the epicenter and td is the time difference in second. Now, please take note that this formula is suited or being used because 8 seconds is the interval between the times of arrival of the P wave and S wave at a distance of 100 kilometers. Next thing to do is to choose one of the recording stations and measure the computed distance on the map scale. The scale of the map is 1.5 centimeter is to 200 kilometers. So you need to set your compass for that computed distance. So how are you going to do that? You need to center a compass on the station you have chosen and draw a circle using the radius for each of the um, station as you can see in your table. So looking at this map, for example, if we are going to draw from the recording station which is in Batangas, if this is Batangas, so you see here in your map that Batangas is actually 400 kilometers away from the epicenter. but for your learning task, we will be using a radius of 3 cm. So you point your compass where Batangas is located. I'm going to show you the, the location of Batangas. If, if, for example, in your map, you can see clearly that Batangas is somewhere here. And then you point your compass here, the needle of your drawing compass here. You measure a radius of 3 cm from that area, for example, it is 3 cm, and you draw a circle around that area. So that would be for Batangas. So for you will be doing the same for Puerto Princesa and Davao. So for example, here is Puerto Princesa. So it is 500, 507 kilometers away from the epicenter. And the radius that you'll be using for your drawing is 3.8 centimeter. Again, position the needle of your drawing compass here at the location of Puerto Princesa. And then 
measure 3.8 centimeter let's say this is the measure 3.8 centimeter and then you draw a circle okay using that radius and that goes on for the third station Davao okay so you, you locate Davao somewhere here in Mindanao point your needle on that location and then you measure 2.4 centimeter and then you make a circle okay next so as I've said you have to repeat steps 3 and 4 for the rest of the station so you should get three circles that intersect or nearly intersect at the point now that intersection is what we call the epicenter the intersection of the three circles is the approximate location epicenter upon completing your drawing of the um, circles around the three recording stations you can now answer the questions in your activity so you have the following questions to answer so if you have questions you can contact your teachers for you to be able to fully understand how are you going to answer these questions okay for learning task number four Learning test number four is just an interpretation of a distance time graph. You're asked to study the graph and you're also uh, to make use of the four questions to learn more about the concepts of distance, of distance time graphs actually. So let's say this is 4,000. Okay, so the question is, how long would S wave arrive after P wave and that distance of a recording station in the epicenter? So you see here, this is actually the time where P wave arrives in that station. So that is approximately seven minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. This is expressed in minutes, not in seconds. Okay, so but the question is what about the s wave if we take a look at here it could be 12 point something 12 point somewhere here so let's say 12 points 12.6 12 minutes arriving so we just have to subtract 12.6 from seven so that is basically 5.6 minutes after after p wave arrives at that station so the same thing for answering questions two three and four you just um look at what point would p wave or s wave arrive or what time in minutes would P wave and S wave arrive at the given distance? 